All right, so now let's continue further. Now let's look at uh, distance uh, formulas. Well, first I'm just gonna look at the distance formula in 2D and then we're gonna extend it to 3D. So recall the 2D distance formula between two points. And uh, basically what we have is like this. So let's say we have y, x, y axis, just drive it here. And then we have a point here. This is point one, P1, and this is our x one yeah I'll call this i'll call this p1 x1 and y1 and then let's say i have a point here p2 this is our x2 y2 like that so the distance between the this and this I'll call this absolute value p1 p2 like that so that's a distance and then we could use pythagoras draw a right angle triangle and then this distance here is going to be absolute value of y uh, 2 minus y1 this is absolute value of x2 minus x1 and then pythagoras yeah and here i just typed it out here or just wrote it out so uh then we just applied pythagoras or pythagorean theorem and then square root uh we're gonna get p1 p2 is equal to the square uh root and we'll only look at the positive square root and it's going to be square root uh, uh over this one here Let's put the, uh, it's for completeness. Well, yeah, if this is absolute value squared, it's, it's the same thing as writing x squared minus x1 squared plus uh, y squared minus, my, uh, minus y1 squared, like that. Whether it's absolute value or not, when you square it's gonna be positive, it's gonna always be positive. So let's just, uh, just recall this formula right there. All right, so now that we have this, and now uh, the familiar formula for the distance between two points in a plane, uh, this one above here is easily extended to the following three-dimensional formula and here is the distance formula in three dimensions yeah so we have the distance p1 p2 between the points p1 x1 y1 z1 and p2 uh, x2 y2 z2 this can be extended over and it's going to be just p1 uh, the absolute value p1 p2 is the distance this equals to square root and then this just extends it over x squared minus x1 squared plus x i mean plus y now y2 minus y1 squared plus z2 minus z1 squared all right so now that we have this and then we're going to go over a proof of it so proof to see why this formula is true so here we just extended it and added the z component here uh, to see why it's true, we construct a rectangular box as in the figure below where P1 and P2 are opposite of vertices and the faces of the box are parallel to the coordinate planes. So let's draw this all out. So if we have a, a Z axis like this, and there's a Y axis like that, and this is our Z like this, and then this is our X like this. Like that and let's draw this uh just in the top here just to get it uh, get high up so it doesn't interfere with the axes so let's say this is our point um this is our point p2 and let's say we have a point across uh here well so i'm just going to draw a box first so let's say we have a box like this and just move it even here so we have a box like this and then this goes down like this this goes like that so we have a box and this is going to be parallel parallel until we have it at vertical like this and then we have this across like that and then behind it all the way to the bottom this is going to be all the way behind it all right so we have this Let's make this a bit neater or downwards more all right and on this point here we'll call this p uh p1 this is going to be p1 p1 and this is going to be our x1 well, actually before we get to that, I just move this over here so we have some more space we're going to have p1 this is going to be our x1 y1 uh, z z1 like that and now this point right here we'll call this p2 like that and erase this and draw a bit bigger okay so this is p2 
P2 is our X2, Y2, Z2, like that. All right, so now we have this, and what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna consider this point here as B. This is our B point, and this is gonna be as uh, X squared, I mean X2. So all we're gonna do is drop this Z all the way down until it matches the Z1 there. Y2 and then Z1, like that. And this is, I'm gonna draw a line across here, dot, dot, dash line across. And this is a uh, perpendicular line, like that. I'll just fix that up, it's gonna be like this, the perpendicular line. Uh, and, and now we're gonna need this point across here. From here to here, this is the point that we want. So this is, um, I'm gonna write this as, I'm gonna write this as a distance. This is gonna be uh, P, I'm gonna write this in red. So all the distances I'm gonna write in red. P1, uh, P2, absolute value. All right, so this point is B, and now this point here is our A. And I'm gonna write this A as, A is X2. So basically, it's gonna be uh, the same thing, this point here, but we're gonna remove this, um, yeah, it's gonna be the same as this one, but we're gonna remove this uh, X1 and replace it with X2, so it goes over to here. This is X2. This is gonna be X2, and then everything else is the same. So it's gonna be Y1, Z1, like that. All right, so now we have this A, B, like that. I'm gonna write this as absolute value of A, B, like that. And uh, again, this is, uh, I'm gonna write this here. This is a, another right angle. So we, get, we have two right angles across here and there. All right, so we have A, B there. Now we have this part here from the top to bottom. This is, uh, we'll call this as uh, P2, B, like that. And the next one here is from here, this A to P1 at the bottom there. That is gonna be our absolute value of P1 and then A. And these distances, this is just, well, this uh, is a horizontal distance. Remember, it's parallel to this. And, and uh, that just means, well, it's gonna be x2 minus x1, the absolute value of it. So we could write this all down. So you could write uh, absolute value of p1 uh, a. So this distance is gonna equal to absolute value of x2 minus x1. And then uh, this one right here, a, b, this is parallel to this y axis. So this distance is just gonna be the y's. So then we have uh, a absolute value or the distance a, b is equal to absolute value of, X of y, y1, y2 minus y1. And then the last one is this vertical component. It's just vertical is parallel with this. And so that's just gonna be z2 minus z1, and that's our p2b. Like that. So we'll write this as p2b is equal to z, yeah, uh, z squared, or um, z2 minus z1, absolute value. All right, so now that we have this set up well we notice what we have is well we have two right angle triangles so we can basically find this distance uh, which is our uh, p1b and then we can solve this distance uh, up top which is p1 p2 so we have two triangles there and i'll just change this back to red so we have this distance right here p1 uh, and then b like that so p1b is down here so that's the hypotenuse of this triangle and then it will become the base of this other triangle, and that's the hypotenuse. So we can apply Pythagorean theorem twice. So because triangles P1, B, P2, so P1, B, uh, P2, uh, and P1, A, B, so P, uh, yeah, P1, A, B right here uh, are right angle. Two applications of the Pythagorean theorem give, and uh, yeah, let's just write it out. So let's write our distance P1, uh, B2, Oops, let's erase this. So P1, B2 there. So we're going to have uh, P, so absolute value of P1, uh, B2. I'm gonna, uh, and I'm going to square it just because Pythagorean theorem is a squared is equal to P1, B plus P2, B uh, squared there. So this equals to uh, P1, B squared plus P, um, this is going to be uh, P2, b squared like that so that's this part right here this and this as this over here that's what we have there and then 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 the second triangle is this is the hypotenuse 
and this hypotenuse squared is equal to this squared and this squared. So in other words, this part right here is going to be P1B squared is equal to P1A squared plus AB squared. And again, this is just this part. So in other words, we can combine, we could throw this inside. So throw this inside here. So that's what we can put inside. And when we do that, we get here. So this becomes P1, P1, P2 squared is equal to, and then we just replace that, replace this with this. P1, A squared plus absolute value a b squared plus the distance p2 let's write this better p2 b squared and we know what these all equal those are just these p1 a1 is x squared minus y minus uh, x1 i mean x1 i mean x2 minus x1 not x squared and then a b is here y2 minus my1 and then p2 b is this one here z2 minus z1 and that's all squared so we could write this as equaling to absolute value x squared minus x1 squared plus uh, y2 minus my1 absolute value plus z2 minus z1 squared. And uh, since we're squaring, it's gonna be positive, so we could put this all together. So thus, and then and also square, uh, square root it just to get it all out of the way and then look at only the positive. Of the square roots of uh, p1 p2 is equal to square root and write this as x and then just write it in a normal bracket x2 x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared plus z2 minus z1 squared and we could just box this all out like that so there is our uh, distance formula in 3d all right, so now let's just uh, quickly double check. And if we scroll up here, uh, yeah, so this is uh, the one we were uh, given. This is, yeah, the distance is just x squared minus x1 squared, and then plus the y's and z, and then all squared. So exactly the same thing as this right here. And now let's take a look at example four. And this one uh, doesn't uh, really give a question, uh, just because it's uh, pretty straightforward. So the distance from the point p to, yeah, from the point P, which is two, the coordinates are two, negative one, seven, to the point Q, which is one, negative three, and five is. So we can just apply uh, this uh, formula there. So PQ is equal to square root, and now the uh, X, X2 minus X1, so that's gonna be two minus one, two minus one squared, then plus Y, the two minus my one, so uh, we'll just have this negative one, minus three, or actually just for completeness, because this is uh, x2 minus x1, just to make it uh, the same format, doesn't matter because you're squaring it, uh, and uh, it's always gonna be uh, the same, it's always gonna be positive. So let's just go one minus two. Let's go from this as our, our uh, x2, or a uh, second point, p2. So that, then it's gonna be negative three minus one. Negative three minus one, that's gonna be, I mean minus negative one is gonna be plus one. And then plus, the next one is five minus seven. Five minus seven squared. And now this equals two, and well, it's square root. Uh, one minus two is, is negative one, but you're squaring it, so, and it's always gonna be positive. So just go one squared, plus this one here, negative three plus two, or I'll just for completeness, I'm just gonna keep this in. Negative one squared, plus, and the negative three plus one is negative two squared, and then plus, five minus seven, negative two squared. This equals two square root, um, and then this is gonna be one, negative one squared is just one, negative two squared is plus four, and then the next one, negative two uh, squared is plus four. Again, that's gonna be eight plus one is nine, equals to square root nine, equals two, three. Yeah, three or, or you could even have a negative three. So negative three times negative three, is also put that for completeness plus minus, <laughs> but it's just going to be that. Uh, we should look at the plus side of it. Yeah, so it just uh, uh, just erase this. So just do a completeness because when you're just square rooting, it's uh, you can have still negative three times negative three, but you can have a negative distance in this case because we're defining it as absolute value. 